I think this shot is the next most obvious shot. I'm not gonna take it again. I don't like that. I'm gonna wait for the light to go down so that I don't see those streaks. When the light's on the other side of the home, I'll have a window that looks more like this, which also has some streaks in it, but because the light's not coming through it, it looks a lot better. I mean, directly through it is. So I am probably going to make this my next shot. So if I'm doing that, I'm going to have to light that, that, and this room. I am going to leave those there because I follow Wayne Capilli's advice about light farming. And we're going to, we're going to move B back to where it was here for our first shot and light this whole room. And then we'll go into there and light the background. Well, after I set up the shot, I could see the flash here. So I decided to change things around, brought the plant back because it deserves to be there. I moved the flash to up here where it won't be in the shot. And then I staged these pillows further this way so that they provide interest. Because I did that, I thought I'd move my second light to here, freeing up B to go here and like this. So it's kind of coming in like these doors and stuff like that and should fill this area. So we're gonna shoot this all Let's see, let's start with lights on. So I'll come back here and uh, hit this little button. I'm gonna make that easier to get to. There we go. And I'm gonna turn these on because I think they do provide a little bit of interest. Let's take a look at our shot. It's a little hard to get in there, but that's our shot. I have it all set up. We're gonna do five exposures. And I think we're ready to go, so let me hit the button. There you go, hit the button, Max. All right. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Now we're gonna turn these lights off and do the same thing. Turn that off. Turn these off. Same exact thing. Five exposures. What do you think? Do you think we got it? All right, now looking at that, we're gonna come back here, turn off our bracketing, and set our exposure for the window, which should be about there. Actually, I'm, yep, I think that works. I'm looking at the highlights right here. I don't want those blown out. I wanna see something in them. And then I'm gonna light to that level, so. I'm thinking we might be right there already with what we've got. So let's see what it hap what happens when we do that. How's that? Not too bad. Okay, as I'm looking at that, I'm thinking the kitchen needs a second light, which shouldn't be a problem. And then we want to put just a little bit of light down that hallway. Although that fading to black like that is not that bad. I, I can live with that. But uh, by and large, I like that. I'm gonna move D to right here. And then I'm gonna move B. See how handy B can be when it works? Oh, and just to let you know, Aloe and Elm, they're the ones who did this beautiful staging. Thank you very much, Aloe and Elm. And I'm gonna take C. Gonna have to crank C down a little bit because this counts as a small room because it's long and narrow and it'll just throw light everywhere. So C is gonna have to come down some. B pr or uh, D probably also, but uh, let me set it up. All right, I'm gonna leave B right where it was. And then I'm gonna take C down to 132. And I'm gonna take D D, come on D, there we go, to one eighth. And let's see how that goes. Oh. 
not happy with the kitchen need a little bit more light in the hall i thought d was out of the shot but it wasn't so i'm gonna move d all the way to over here there's enough white and enough space that's gonna bounce around and soften up a little bit i also took b down a little bit because i think it was just a little too sharp so let's see where this goes no, now B needs to come back up. B's at one quarter. I'm going to take it to a half. And let's take D, which is in the kitchen, up a little bit more. It was at one eighth. I'm taking it up to one quarter. Let's try that. You know, the thing about flash is you don't know until you shoot it. There we go. That's a good kitchen. That's it. That's everything I want all right there. Yeah, you have to play around with it and dial it in until you get it right. And it's okay to take three or four shots to get it right. But now we got it right, let's move on. Well, this is Dave and I'm ready to dig in on the edit. So let's go right in. First thing I notice is those lights off to the right-hand side that they're not even in the shot. So we don't even care about that. All I'm going to do is find a good image just to get that glow for those lamps. And I think that's good. I'll go ahead and I'll take the highlights down and the shadows up so that we, I don't, I don't want the lights, you know, going completely black where the light specifically isn't. So I think that looks pretty good. So we'll mark that green and we'll move on to our first normal exposure. And that's this one. Right now, I'm looking at the majority of the image here. That is, you know, 60 to 80% of the image. I'm not so concerned about all those highlights. I know they're there. I'm prepared for them. But what I'm really looking at is the walls in the background and the walls, the walls that are all over the living room. So by and large, I think we've got a good exposure here. Maybe bring them up just a teeny bit to right there. We'll go ahead and bring the highlights down so that where the highlights and this exposure meet, they're going to be a little closer in exposure. They're not going to be exact. That's what editing is about. We'll bring the shadows up a little bit. I'm seeing a lot of orange, especially if you look at the couch, the front face of the couch. There's a lot of orange there. So I'm going to go down here to my color mixer and grab this in the saturation mode and grab where I see that orange the strongest and bring that down. And I think that looks fine. That takes a lot of that orange out of it. We've also got a lot of blue in the background. It's not in the part of this image that I'm going to use. So I'm just not even gonna mess with that blue back here. All right, I think by and large that looks good. I'm gonna mark that one green. And where did my marker go? There we go. Mark that green. Now I'm going to skip over the darkest exposure and go to the medium dark exposure and just hit previous so it copies it all over. I think the highlights there could be a little brighter. There we go. We've still got definition in them, but I think that looks really, really good. So that looks fine. I'll mark that one green. Now I'm looking for something that's going to include the kitchen. And now we'll take that blue out. Uh, that looks okay. Let's look at the next exposure. That's a little too hot. Let's go here and just bring that up a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. We'll take the highlights down. Shadows up a little bit. I'm also looking at that back window way back there. And I'm thinking maybe I'm going to need to pull that. Let's look, is it gonna pull? Yeah, it's gonna pull fine from that previous exposure. So we'll use this for the kitchen. We're gonna come down to our color mixer and in saturation mode, pull out the blue and that is a good component. So we're essentially gonna make our ambient from three exposures this time. The highlight exposure so that those highlights are not burnt out. A very underexposed exposure, underexposed exposure? Um, and that'll be where we'll pull the kitchen in from and then our main exposure, which will be the main room. All right, so that looks really good. 
Now let's go into our next group. This is a flash exposure. It's a little bit dark. Again, I'm looking at the walls here. I'm looking at 80% or so of the picture and I'm trying to get that right. So we'll pull down the highlights a little bit. I know I'm not going to use the kitchen from this shot, so I'm not even looking at that giant flash in the background. Let's go ahead and bring that up. I am going to do the same trick where I bring those that out. Do you see how it also takes out the rug? That's where we're getting that orange from, is that rug is reflecting up. So I've got a trick for that too. I'm going to go ahead and use that. Let's add a little bit of black to it. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to mark that as green. And now I'm going to copy it. Create virtual copy. There we go. And now I'm going to put that orange right back in and that yellow right back in. That way I can use one of those exposures just to bring in the clean looking couch and not lose all the orange and the yellow in that rug and in the picture and in the wicker basket and in the chair. So that is two exposures doing the same job, but we're fixing some color contamination there. All right, so let's go through these flash exposures. And as I recall, we just liked that last one. So I'm gonna go to our undeoranged. Put that into memory. We've talked about this before. And then copy that to this flash exposure. And then I am going to bring the shadows down a little bit. Bring the exposure up because I need to see it a little bit more. And we're still getting some highlights in there that I don't like. I think that will work. So let's mark that as green. So we've got a few layers here. Let's see. Let's go with one, two, three four, five, not that one, six. And then we should have the lights, seven layers. All right, shoot them on over to Photoshop. All right, we've got all of them into Photoshop now. Now I'm gonna hit my F2 and that's gonna line them all up. And that was quick. Now I'm gonna put them in the order that I want them. For this one, I'm going to start with the darkest layer, which is this layer. The Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. This is our lights layer. So that one's going to go on top. I'm not even going to mess with that. I'll put a black mask on that. That'll just go on at the very end. That only affects those lamps. So that's all we need there. Our next two ambient is our medium ambient and our highlight ambient. And those I want in that order at the very bottom because I'm going to start with that darker image and put the lighter image in on top of it. So I can go ahead and put a black mask on that. Now here's our highlight image. I'm just going to go ahead and knock this bad boy out right now. We are going to zoom in and we're going to cut right along these walls. And we're just going to make a mask right here. I don't know if you've seen the other episode where I do this or not, but I kind of fudge the top parts of these and I will fix them in the mask with a very diffuse brush later. This is the part where I want to get it as close as I can. Down to there. And again, we've got nice straight lines, which makes it easy and fast to cut this in. If there were a plant or something here, that would make it really difficult, but there we go. Now I just hit the mask button and there we go. And I can see that shadowy area and all that. That's something we will fix and we'll do it later. But for now, that's good. And we're going to take that and put that on top of our ambient layers. So all those ambients are at the bottom. And then we should have just flashes up at the top. Let's see, flash, flash. Oh, I'm sorry, getting old. One flash is the de-oranged and one is the not de-oranged. That makes sense. And then this final flash is bringing in the 
dining room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the, the cutout I already made for the dining room. I'm going to hold down my option key and I'm going to bring that up to the flash for that area and copy that up so I don't have to recut it. And that looks really good. Now I'm going to go onto that mask on the flash layer and we've got that ugly outline up there. So I just take a brush and I make it pretty big. Let's see. Yeah, really big. And I take the flow way down because this, this should be subtle. We want to just bring that in very subtly so we don't really notice it at all. And then at the bottom, do the same. And it's okay if it takes, you know, 10, 15 seconds. There we go. Now we can decide if we want to bring in that door almost dead center. Let's turn that level off. Yeah, let's bring in a little bit of that. And again, we'll do it with a very, very low flow. We're at eight. No, we're at nine. Sorry, I lied. But we do need to go from a black to a white brush because now we're exposing. So we're just going to bring that in just a little bit. See, just a tiny bit. There we go. And then I want to put something back in that hallway too. I could at this point, and what the heck, we're going to do it since it's a tutorial. I am going to just cut a screen around this so that I can only raise the, the exposure of that back hallway. And not the couch or the balustrade in front of it. All right, and then up and connect those and then hold your shift key and you add to it like this because we want to include that area because it wouldn't do if that stayed dark that would really stand out again hold the shift key so that we get the plus and we add this area in perfect now zoom back out and low flow with a white and we'll just start bringing that in there we go that may even be too much let's reverse out of it i do like it when it kind of went dark like that i think that it looks natural but i don't i still want to be able to see in there i guess now let's remove our selection and double check the top and make sure we don't have a line showing which we do so I'll just clean that up a little bit. And there we go. We've got our flash layers all put together. Let's see. Okay, so that is our couch. We only want the couch in this. So let's try something new. I've never done this. So I'm going to play with this. The magic quick selection is that the right one yeah let's let's just click through this and try and get the couch all selected yeah yeah that doesn't work there is select subject you want to try that yeah it got it look at that we can just do a little bit more editing Again, I'm holding the shift key. Watch, watch that icon. I hold the shift and it adds a plus. So we know we're adding to the image here or we're adding to the selection. I'm sorry. And there we go. We've got the whole couch. Now we need to take out the coffee table now i'm holding the option key i'll put the uh the icon up now see it turns into a minus so that we can take this out of there and now i click mask and there now we've got the original orange without that discoloration going on to that couch and I think that looks really good. 
our highlights are a little bright. I might, if I were really editing this and not in such a hurry, just showing you how I do it, I'd probably go back and lower my highlights a little bit to bring the exposure a little bit more in control. I think we'll be able to fake it well enough once we do the combination here. All right, so I take these three flash layers. I put them into a group and I put a white mask on that. I put them all into a group like that so that they all act as a single image or I'm, I'm acting on them as if they were a single image. So that's looking pretty good. Let's turn it off for now and let's fix our ambient layers. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the, the window into the... Oh, I'm seeing a mistake there. Look at that. We're going to have to take that one cabinet that's so dark there out. I'm going to go ahead and leave this up. Let's zoom in and let's select this area that looks so horrid. This is kind of what I mean about, you know, you've got to really think for yourself when you when you're in here. You know, you've. You never know what you're going, what problems you're going to run into. And this is a good example of one that I did not see coming. Let's see, what way are we going to want? We're going to want this to be white. So I'm going to select that. It needs to be lit with the kitchen. Now I go onto the mask, zoom out a little bit, and let's... I believe we're going to want a white mask, so let me hit X so I go to white. Make it a little bigger. I like bigger tools when I'm doing broad areas, and I don't want to make one specific area stand out, and I want it even across the whole thing. That's going to work. We're going to do all that fixing up on the bottom and the, and the ceiling a little later, but that should fix... What we're seeing there let's deselect it you know what there's an edge on it now's when we get small and let's zoom in there and let's fix up that edge we don't want that edge to show a whole lot and it should be just fine with the white There we go. That looks good. All righty. Now let's just turn that layer completely off and we're going to build the room itself. We'll start with this dark image, which has acceptable highlights in it. And then we'll bring in the rest of the room with the medium exposure, the one that I said covered like 80% of the room. We're going to go with a big brush and we're going to go with a little bit higher flow here, up in the 15s or 20s. And we're just going to bring that room in, trying to avoid all the areas of highlight. It's okay if we get the highlights, because that's the beauty of masking, is you can bring things in and out and make mistakes and fix them, and it's all non-destructive. But for the time being, that looks pretty good. I'd say that looks pretty darn natural. I'm going to make it smaller and just get on this couch a little bit and lighten up the couch. There we go. Now I'm hitting X so that I'm to black. And I'm just making sure that these edges are done. There we go. All right. I think that looks really good. Now let's bring in the kitchen. Get rid of that blue. Ooh, that does look horrible, doesn't it? Well, now we just go onto that mask and let's start painting black in. And let's paint black up here. I'm going to make it a little smaller. There's like right in there, it was really nasty. Okay, now you can see at the top and the bottom, 
we've got some dark areas. So I'll just hit X and we'll just clean those up a little bit. And I realize that looks horrible. So what we're going to do, again, you got to notice your problems and then you go in and you fix them. So you just make your brush smaller or you can outline them. Oops, sorry. You can outline them in a select box or something so that you get just the areas you want. But regardless, you want to clean that up so it doesn't stand out. And I think what I'm going to do here is do exactly that. Just make a quick select box for that. And there we go. And I'm going to make it a lot bigger. I'm going to bring the flow way down and I'm going to reverse it now and just add a little bit of black because you would have some black up at the top or some darker, not black, darker. There we go. I think that works. So let's hit deselect and see how that looks. That looks pretty natural. Now let's fix it down here. So again, we've got a line that it is marking our, well, it's our demarcation line. That makes sense. So we can really easily do that. So we've selected the inside of it right now. And I think that will help. Let's, I hit X so that it's lightening it. Now let's hit X again and just darken the bottom. And then there's a little bit of, we have to match that part right there. I'm probably going to go back and do that without the select tool. But now this is kind of fun. Select inverse. So now everything outside of that box is being selected. And then you hit X. So you're doing the exact opposite to the opposite area. And then let's bring that. Oh, there we go. Bring that down. All right. Now select deselect. And let's just remove that line right there. There we go. And we can't see that. And we do need to fix that little spot right there. All right, that's good enough for this. I can see there's a little splotchiness. I would spend a lot more time on this if I was not doing a tutorial and not wanting to bore you guys. So just know you see an area like that, go in till you fix it perfectly. You might have to go back and forth. Yeah, you can see it. It's kind of splotchy there. Let's, I hate to leave it there. I can, uh, there, take that splotch out. Here, let's just whoosh. see a splotch up at the top too. Let's see what we can do about evening that out. Again, make it big. Make it big and make the flow low so it's subtle. There we go. I think that cleans it up. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now we've got our ambient layer done. And we have our flash layer done. So let's turn the flash layer back on. I did that. Let's bring it down to about 75%, round in there. And now let's start painting black with a low flow on it. Um, it's at 5%. That's a little too low. We're going to go up to 14 here. And we'll just start painting that in. We're going to take that real flashy look out of back there. That was just horrible. And then I think, but yeah, behind that lamp, there was a, a shadow that's gone now. That highlight reads, you can still see it's bright but it's not overexposed and you're not losing detail. It, it isn't 100% natural, obviously, because we had to screw with it to make it work, 
but it looks natural. It feels natural. And it gives some life and some vibrance to this room, I think. That back window, I would almost leave. But I'm going to show you a trick with it so that it looks a little better. I think by and large, that looks pretty good. Okay, our next thing is to go to our lamp level. Remember, don't forget about those lights. And we're just going to turn that into luminosity mode. And then we'll just go over each of those lamps with a white brush and we'll add a glow to them. And you can glow them as much or as little as you want. So I get my brush small to about the size of the light. I want a white brush. And they're not showing all that much, are they? All right. Again, a problem. How do I fix it? Well, obviously, they need more exposure. You could go back to Lightroom, bring up the exposure, send it back in. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is fix the exposure of just that layer right now in Photoshop. So we're just going to bring in a new filter called Curves. I love Curves. Curves is like my favorite. Let's bring Curves up there. Um, I'm going to hit the Option button, which me makes Curves only affect the layer right beneath it. So only affecting the lamps and just the parts that we have let through the mask. Then we just take this little finger guy and we come over here and it's picking what we want to raise and we just raise that up till we get it as bright as we can. And maybe that's not enough. So, you know what? Duplicate it. Do it again. Or maybe in this image, it really isn't worth doing. Sometimes that's the answer too. You know, it doesn't need to knock you in the face. It just needs to look real. I don't like that with two layers on. That looks okay, but it's not, you know, I think it's fine. We're just going to leave it like that. I don't need this second layer, so I'm going to delete it. Yes, I want to delete it. And then what was the layer that had the really good window pull? Okay, I'm going to hit my F3, which reduces everything to one layer. And then I'm going to start bringing things up on top of it. There we go. All right, so let's go back to this window. And let's see about doing a real quick select to bring it in. This is going to be a nasty one because we've got this plant. But we just kind of jog around it. And just like we did with the top of the shot of the kitchen, we can do it roughly here and then clean it up later with a brush when we look at the image as a whole. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So there we go. Hit mask. And yeah, I knew that was not going to look perfect. But there it is. First off, it's way too strong. So let's bring it down to where we want it, probably right in there. And then just go into here. And using a white and a black brush, just take that line out. You Obviously, we see the, the line where I did the selection. And you hide that. And you just make the whole thing look real. That's what it's all about. It's not how you get there. It's just getting there. There we go. Actually, I kind of like the way it darkens the glasses, too. The glasses were a little too bright. So I'm going to bring that inside, even, and use that to clean up some stuff here. Happy accidents! I don't know if any of you are fans of, of the Bob Ross, but I am a big fan of the Bob Ross. Oh, look at this. I just saw that, too. We've got a 
little bit of a flash hiding up there. So let's go to the, the layer that I can bind everything onto and we'll just take it out with a really small, whatever this tool is. So I'll just copy that over and clone brush. Is that what it is? Yeah, I can just copy that across and there it's gone. For some reason that turns darker. There we go. That fixes it. Oh, you know what that is right there? I'm not going to mess with that at this point. That is my camera case. Shouldn't be there. And in the final, I would take that out. But for this, I'm not going to. All right, this looks good. Let's hit Command S, save it back to Lightroom. And then now that it's there, we'll just close out of here, go back to Lightroom. First thing I like to do now is let's put our guided on both sides. And here, and that should, there we go. That looks really good. I think, yeah, I see a little bit of red in here and that's chromatic aberration. So let's just go ahead and see if we get, yeah, there, it doesn't take much to take that out. And then I copy that over to the green and then that should be good to send it back to Lightroom because I, ping pong is my favorite game. And then honestly, I'm just going to do a real quick topaz on this. I think, I think the room looks good. I think it looks very natural. Sharpen all, and let's take that down to about there and denoise and send it right back. We are going to do a crop on it, and then I think we're going to call this one done. I'm not super happy with this chair on the right. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to make a copy of this. And then I am going to... I think there's a select remove tool now. I don't know about that, but I'm just going to... Well, I'm going to see if I can find a select remove tool. And if not, I'm going to remove this. Uh, again, this is not... Um, all right, we'll try content aware fill and see if that works. Again, this is not something that's, ew, that's horrible. This is not something that is a part of the house. So you can edit it out if you want to. That edit that it made is horrible. So we're going to cancel out of that. Let's do this. We should be able to come over here and grab this and just start painting that right there. And all I care about is the top of it because it's not going to work for the the bottom it's two different sizes and they're too far away from each other so the the sizes are not going to match but so now we'll just go back and we'll get the bottom of it we'll put the bottom right there and now oops hit z I'm going to put the top back in again and try and get that. There we go. Is that it? And then the bottom again right there and we'll just take it from here. And then the 
look at the the wood is the easiest part just grab it anywhere and then we can just keep painting that out Try and grab it up upstream from where you're painting and you should be able to, you know, keep the angles correct and all that. Um, because we need to get rid of that shadow too, the shadow of the, the chair. I'm going to widen the select area. And just paint that out that's pretty easy i know we're going to have a bad time along that line i'm going to wait till we're done with the whole thing and then i'm going to come back and finish that actually no i'm not you know what i'm going to do i'm going to deselect and then i'll clean up this line right here right along there we go make that not noticeable now we'll fix this little part where it screwed up and just fix that little part then deselect oh that's handy that thing drives me crazy it drives me bonkers always popping up in my way but i'm gonna fix all that and i'm just gonna use a paintbrush here grab the paintbrush grab that color and there we go clean that up bingo i mean that doesn't even matter at all deselect let's try and clean up the top of that again get it smaller and we need to clean up right here there we go look at that that's looking clean and now i bet if i just do a select content aware fill on this i bet you that's gone try that you can take things out of what it's going to fill with it looks like it's filling with darker colors that i don't like so I'll just take all that out. It usually does a better job than that. You know what? That's good enough to get it started with. And then what I'll do is combine them all to one layer. And then I'll just copy the top down. So hit F3 to make that all one layer. Select, deselect. And then I'll take this, make it big. And I'll just copy right there. Oh, it's not matching color. Well, I'm wasting way too much time on this. Fix that. You know how to fix that. All right. Now, let's send that back to Lightroom. So I think there is too much ceiling in this and now that we've got that that ugly chair and it's not there we've got too much wall there so i'll be able to come in from top and right and square this up and make this look really really good so there close out of that go into lightroom let's look at the full size all right bring this down see we just need that much of that wall right there and i think I don't think we even need that window. I think that works pretty good. No, we need, I wanna see all of that tree. I don't wanna cut the tree off. And that gives us a little bit of that window, which I don't like. We are going to do that crop and see this. I find that a minor annoyance. So we are going to go for a third time back to Photoshop. And we're just going to take all that out because, again, it is not material to the home. In fact, this is all stuff that the stager brought. So it, it has nothing to do with the home. So it can easily be taken out. 
without being an ethics problem. And sometimes it just takes two or three times of doing this and then Lightroom figures out what you are doing. There we go. That should do it because I've now I've gotten the whole object. Okay, there we go. This is something I find super, super important. I call it policing your borders. Look at those borders and make sure they're clean. When you have distractions in those borders, it ruins the whole flow and the integrity of the image. This image now has beautiful lines on the corners. There's nothing that interrupts the image or makes you say, hey, what is that? And it's all about the image and it's clean. That's the important thing. It's clean. So we'll save this back to Lightroom or yeah, Lightroom. And we are done with this image so we can give it at this point. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. I told you about how I green the components of the image so I know which ones to send over to Photoshop to layer. But once I'm done with an image, I give it three stars. And that way I know this is ready to deliver. I reserve four and five in case I go back to it and play with it some more. So I know three and then four and then five. And usually I don't go back to it any more than that. But there is our image. I hope you like it. If you have some different ideas for how I should have treated this, please let me know. Love to hear your ideas. Otherwise, I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of this. And may your next image be your best image.